A year ago, I uh, spoke to you about a book that I was just in the process of completing that has come out in the interim, and I'd like to talk to you today about uh, some of the controversies that that uh, book inspired. The book is called The Blank Slate, uh, based on the popular idea that the human mind is a blank slate and that all of its structure comes from socialization, culture, parenting, experience. The blank slate was an influential idea in the 20th century. Here are a few quotes uh, indicating that man has no nature from the historian Jose Ortega y Gasset. Man has no instincts from the anthropologist Ashley Montague. The human brain is capable of a full range of behaviors and predisposed to none from uh, the late scientist Stephen Jay Gould. There are a number of reasons to doubt that the human mind is a blank slate. And some of them just come from common sense. As many people have uh, told me over the years, anyone who's had more than one child knows that kids come into the world with certain temperaments and talents. It doesn't all come from the outside. Oh, and anyone who uh, has both a child and a house pet has surely noticed that the child exposed to speech will acquire a human language, whereas the house pet won't, presumably because of some innate difference between them. And anyone who's ever been in a heterosexual relationship knows that the minds of men and the minds of women are not indistinguishable. Uh, there are also, uh, I think, increasing uh, results from uh, the scientific study of humans that indeed were not born blank slates. One of them from anthropology is the study of human universals. If you've ever taken anthropology, you know that it's a uh, kind of an occupational uh, uh, pleasure of anthropologists to show how exotic other cultures can be and that there are places out there where supposedly everything is the opposite to the way it is here. Uh, but if you uh, instead look at what uh, is common to the world's cultures, you find that there is an enormously rich set of uh, behaviors and emotions and ways of construing the world that can be found in all of the world's 6,000 odd cultures. The anthropologist Donald Brown has tried to uh, list them all and they range from aesthetics, uh, affection and age statuses all the way down to weaning, weapons, weather, attempts to control the color white and a world view. Also, genetics and neuroscience are increasingly showing that the brain is intricately uh, structured. This is a recent study by the neurobiologist Paul Thompson and his colleagues in which they, using uh, MRI, measured the distribution of gray matter, that is the, uh, the outer layer of the cortex, in a large sample of uh, pairs of people. And they coded correlations in the thickness of gray matter in different parts of the brain using a false color scheme in which uh, no difference uh, is coded as purple, and any color other than purple indicates a statistically significant correlation. Well, this is what happens when you pair people up at random. By definition, uh, the uh, two people picked at random can't have correlations in the distribution of gray matter in the uh, cortex. This is what happens in... Uh, people who share half of their DNA, fraternal twins. And as you can see, large amounts of the brain are not purple, showing that if one person has uh, a thicker uh, bit of cortex in that region, so does his fraternal twin. And here's what happens uh, if you uh, get a pair of people who share all of their DNA, namely clones or identical twins. Uh, and uh, you can see huge areas of cortex where there are massive correlations in the uh, distribution of gray matter. Now, these aren't just uh, a, um, differences in anatomy, like the shape of your earlobes, but they have consequences in thought and behavior uh, that are well illustrated in this famous cartoon by Charles Adams. Separated at birth, the Malifert twins meet accidentally. <laughs> and as you can see, there are uh, two inventors with identical contraptions in their lap meeting in the waiting room of a patent attorney. Now, the cartoon is not... Uh, such an exaggeration, because studies of identical twins who were separated at birth and then tested in adulthood show that they have astonishing similarities. Uh, and this happens in every pair of uh, identical twins separated at birth ever studied, much less so with fraternal twins separated at birth. My favorite example is of uh, a pair of twins, one of whom was brought up uh, as a Catholic in a Nazi family in Germany. The other was brought up in a Jewish family in uh, Trinidad. When they walked into the lab in Minnesota, they were wearing identical navy blue shirts with epaulettes. Both of them liked to dip buttered toast in coffee. 
Both of them kept rubber bands around their wrists. Both of them flushed the toilet before using it as well as after. And both of them liked to uh, surprise people by sneezing in crowded elevators to watch them jump. <laughs> now, uh, the story might seem too good to be true, but uh, when you administer uh, batteries of psychological tests, uh, you get the same results, namely identical twins separated at birth show uh, quite astonishing similarities. Now, w given both that common sense and scientific data are calling the doctrine of the blank slate into question, why should it have been such an appealing notion? Well, there are a number of political reasons why people have found it congenial. The foremost is that uh, if we're blank slates, then by definition, we are equal, because zero equals zero equals zero. But if something is written on the slate, then some people could have more of it than others, and according to this line of thinking, that would justify discrimination and inequality. Another political fear of uh, human nature is that uh, if we were blank slates, we can perfect mankind, the age-old dream of the perfectibility of our species, through social engineering, whereas if we're born with certain instincts, then perhaps some of them might condemn us to selfishness, prejudice, and violence. Well, in the book, I argue that these are, in fact, non sequiturs. Uh, and just to make a long story short, first of all, the concept of fairness is not the same as the concept of sameness. And so when Thomas Jefferson wrote in the uh, Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, he did not mean we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are clones. Rather, that all men are equal in terms of their rights and that every person ought to be treated as an individual and not prejudged by the statistics of particular groups that they may belong to. Also, uh, even if we were born with certain ignoble motives, they don't automatically lead to ignoble behavior. And that is because the human mind is a complex system with many parts, and some of them can inhibit others. Uh, for example, there's excellent reason to believe that uh, virtually all humans are born with uh, a moral sense. Uh, and we have cognitive abilities that allow us to profit from the lessons of history. So even if people did have impulses towards selfishness or greed, that's not the only thing in the skull, and there are other parts of the mind that can counteract them. Uh, and in the book, I uh, go over controversies such as this one and a number of other uh, hot buttons, hot zones, Chernobyls, third rails, and so on including the arts, cloning, crime, free will, education, evolution, gender differences, God, homosexuality, infanticide, inequality, Marxism, morality, Nazism, parenting, politics, race, rape, religion, resource depletion, social engineering, technological risk, and war. And needless to say, uh, there were certain risks in taking on uh, these subjects. Uh, when I wrote a first draft of the book, I circulated it to a number of colleagues for comments. And um, here are some of the uh, reactions that I got. Uh, better get a security camera for your house. Uh, don't expect to get any more awards, job offers, or positions in scholarly societies. Tell your publisher not to list your hometown in your author bio. Do you have tenure? Well, the uh, book came out in October, and uh, nothing terrible has happened. Uh, I, uh, uh, unlike uh, there were, was uh, indeed reason to, uh, to be nervous, and uh, there were moments in which I did feel nervous, knowing the history of uh, what has happened to people who've taken controversial uh, stands or uh, discovered disquieting findings in the uh, behavioral sciences. There are many cases, some of which I talk about in the book, of people who've been uh, slandered, uh, called Nazis, physically assaulted, threatened with criminal prosecution for uh, stumbling across or arguing uh, about controversial findings. Uh, and you never know when you're going to come across one of these booby traps. My favorite example is a pair of psychologists who did research on left-handers and published some data showing that left-handers are, on average, more susceptible to disease, more prone to accidents, and have a shorter lifespan. It's not clear, by the way, since then, whether that is an accurate uh, generalization, but the data at the time seemed to support that. Well, pretty soon they were uh, barraged with uh, in, enraged letters, uh, death threats, uh, ban on the topic in a number of scientific journals coming from uh, irate left-handers and their advocates. 